Coming up on this special edition of How We Built It, we meet Agreco, a global leader in the supply of temporary power generation and temperature control systems for major events, like the Super Bowl here in the US, providing backup energy for the Fukushima nuclear power station in Japan, or energy supply during times of crises. Now we're gonna look at how they're evaluating Azure Synapse to increase their operational efficiency with just-in-time supply of their specialist equipment. So I'm joined today by Elizabeth Hollinger, Director of Data Insights at Agreco, joining us today from Scotland. Welcome to Microsoft Mechanics. Thanks, it's great to be on the show. And thanks so much for joining us today. And by the way, if you're new to Azure Synapse, this is Microsoft's limitless analytics platform that really brings together enterprise data warehousing and also big data processing into a single service environment. So Agreco really serves this critical foundational role in terms of providing organizations and even countries the power and energy solutions that they need. Elizabeth, what are you guys doing to help in these cases? So it all comes down to how we use our data to drive value. And one of the areas we focus on is operational efficiency. As you pointed out, our global business requires a highly responsive supply and demand infrastructure. We manufacture our specialist equipment ourselves, and we need to keep a well-stocked inventory of parts so we can meet both temporary and long-term demand. We create bespoke applications for every customer based on their need and their specific operating conditions. So for example, we might be providing power and cooling solutions in high ambient temperature in Australia, or we might be providing power to drill for oil in the North Sea. So there's a lot of complexity in how we build our assets for very specific needs. Okay, so can you tell us your systems to date and how you've been tackling this uh, before Azure Synapse? Yeah, sure. So we started down a path of modernizing our data state a few years ago by introducing a data lake. Historically, we used to upload our data from disparate systems to our on-prem data warehouse. We ran this batch process three times a day, starting every eight hours, and it would take around four hours for the job to complete. Every day, we delete and rebuild our data warehouse, having to overwrite data to avoid exceeding our storage limits. So to solve for this, we replatformed our on-prem data warehouse and our reports to the data lake in Azure. This created for us that coveted single source of truth the central data hub for our applications and our customers to access the data they need. Now, all of the data from our source systems, as well as any external data we use, is ingested, stored, and transformed directly in the data lake. So we no longer need this long scheduled batch process, as now every time data is changed in a system, it passes automatically to the data lake, and we no longer have those storage limitations. So the data is more accessible, and we also have high-frequency time series data, including the most up-to-date data for manufacturing. Great. So can you tell us how you're experimenting now with Azure Synapse? Yeah, sure. So one of the things we wanted to do was to explore insights without moving the data outside of that central data lake. Synapse gives us a single environment to explore and query the data without moving it. So irrespective of the volume of data, we can achieve exponentially faster insights by querying directly over the lake before outputting insight to Power BI. And it also gives our data scientists and analysts one cohesive workspace, which is brilliant for collaboration. So it's really great to see that Azure Synapse now is part of your data modernization strategy. But how do you then, or how does it then help with the approach that you're taking for things like uh, just-in-time logistics and also the supply chain? Sure, so let me give you an example of one of our recent projects that we've now transformed using Azure Synapse. We have a parts inventory report that pulls a selection of data from our ERP system, things like manufacturing orders, purchase orders, delivery dates, etc. And in the past, to check that our inventory levels, we'd rely on polling the data every eight hours, using that information to build a report in Excel that could take up to a day to produce, so there was always this lag in information that the team had access to. This report allows our manufacturing planners and buyers to check if they have the complete bill of materials in order to build an asset. And that includes things like pipes, cables, containers, wires, et cetera. Right, so then in this case, your, your views and everything are kind of delayed all the time, material shortages, everything's got this lag kind of built into it, so it gets better now, right? Yeah, so we were always operating a little bit behind 
And we could end up spending loads of time understanding how the numbers were derived, which took away from the time we could spend building the assets. So with Synapse, we can query directly over the lake and output to Power BI to produce a report now in minutes. And that data can now refresh every five minutes, which is near real time for us. This sounds really great, but I'd love to see it in action. Can we take a look? Sure. So here is our materials status report in Power BI, and we've created this with Synapse. The dashboard page provides a summary of the status of the parts. The users of this report include the buyers and our manufacturing teams. So we're interested in who the buyer is and where there's a shortage of any particular part. This middle table shows detail on where we have shortages and for what inventory. Where it's red, there are shortages and we can see by how many units. And orange means there is stock to meet that week's production demand. When I click into the detailed view, you can see we have a Power App integrated within the report with comments included from the buyers. So I can see there are zero of this part in stock, but 10 on order. We need more than that, so we can create another request for purchase with a due date of the 28th. So I'll submit comment to send the request to order now. And now I can see a view of all activities across suppliers from all the parts requested and where the inventory is located and its status. And I can also see activities by supplier. So it's current and just in time view of your inventory and uh, all the materials that you have, but this wasn't possible before. So what did you do then in the back end using Azure Synapse to get all of this enabled and running? So once we've ingested any of our data sources, we typically spend around 30 or 40% of the time exploring, transforming that data, making it ready to create insight from. So during that time, we discover, work, and reshape the data and reshape that data model. So here you can see our notebook and Synapse running PySpark. It's attached to the data from our inventory system, which contains info from a number of sources, like those manufacturing orders and purchase orders I mentioned. So this is a query to preview this file as a table, even though it's a flat JSON file. So let's run this, and you'll see it returns our table, and it's sorted by timestamp. You can see the most recent timestamps. Now pay attention to this top stamp of the last record at 1315. Before this, data would have updated every eight hours. So I'm going to rerun the same query on our live data. We sped up this demo recording for the interest of time. But you'll see when it completes that the results are five minutes newer as indicated by our top row here at 1320. And we can see seven more orders have come through. And this is great because all of your queries now are querying over the most up-to-date operational data. But what are you doing then to explore that data? So yeah, here in our second notebook, we're using a Spark job to manipulate the data to highlight expected shortages that will cause delay in the manufacturing. So first of all, I'll make sure we can read the column names for subsequent queries. Next, I'll output everything in CSV format into our data lake folder. From here, I can then read the CSV with all of our warehouses. And I can also query it using SQL. For example, if I want to filter to a specific warehouse location. So let's run all of these in order. First, I'll run the CSV write. Next, I'll run the read. And lastly, I'll run the filter and update my data. And you'll see it's found all the data from all the different warehouses. But let me show the filtered data from this specific warehouse, HM0. And if I scroll to the right, you can see here the inventory status which is how we derive the order status parts that we saw in Power BI. So we've done all the exploration and analysis, but what else do we need to do to publish all of that back into Power BI? Yeah, so our last step then is just to be able to publish and visualize this information to make it easy to understand in Power BI. So here's the output CSV we saw in our data exploration. Even though it's a flat file, I can preview the data as a table in the data lake. And if I right click on it, then create a new notebook, I can run T-SQL or Python against it directly, and it even builds my first cell calling the CSV file. So I click in Properties and give it a name, say Explorer Buyers. And to get to these notebooks later, you'll find them in the develop area of our Synapse workspace. So I'll close this one 
and jump over to a notebook I created earlier called Explore Manufacturing, and I'll run that. And that'll take a moment, but we'll see the raw output below. Of course, using Power BI, I can make this easier to analyze. I'll go now to our Power BI, into Manufacturing and our Material Status Report. And this is the Power BI report that I showed earlier on. The great thing about this is that our developers can dynamically test out the end user experience and make sure everything's working correctly, even the Power App. And we can do that all within Synapse. This is a big deal for us because it just makes our developers' lives easier. So pretty much you've got all of the analytics foundation for managing your inventory and your logistics really as needs start to dynamically change. But what's next then for you and Agreco? So next for us is that we want to explore how we can take this further and build in longer looking lead times for our manufacturing team to plan. So thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks so much for sharing with us uh, your evaluation of Azure Synapse. And if you liked hearing from Agreco, please also check out the rest of our series for how we built it at aka.ms slash Azure Synapse series to learn from other early adopters trying out Azure Synapse. That's all the time we have for today's show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.